Hey viewers, my name's Kara. I'm recording this video on Tuesday, October 17th, but you won't be seeing it until next week. But the last video that will have gone up on this channel is a video that I just scheduled to post today, and it'll be going up on Friday the 20th, which is about my newest deck, the Halloween Tarot, and showing you some of the cards and comparing them to my Pamela Coleman Smith Rider Waite deck, the very the traditional tarot, quote unquote, artwork, and talking about my opinion of the suits. And in that video, while I was talking about one of the suits, the suit of wands, which in the Halloween tarot is themed as imps, this is the Halloween tarot box. The general idea of the artwork, super fun and Halloween-y. I love Halloween. I am one of those witches that also loves the secular Halloween and everything involved in Halloween. The very kitschy, the very folksy. I love it. It's always been one of my favorite holidays. And Samhain also is one of my favorite Sabbaths. So I have a lot of connection to this time of year and all of the ways that we celebrate it from the very, not somber, but the very reverent and the very meaningful and significant Samhain to the very fun and lighthearted, um, trick-or-treat-y Halloween as we celebrate it in this country. So the Halloween tarot is something that I fell in love with and I've been wanting for a while and I just got it this year for my birthday. Uh, so anyway, the video was talking about my opinion of the suits that are used and I was thinking about the fact that in that video, when I was talking about the suit of wands, which is imps, I mentioned the fact that I've been learning more about the tarot in the past year or so, more than I've ever done in the past, so I'm becoming more and more used to it, learning more, reading with it more, getting to know uh, the basic traditional form more, but I've noticed that the wands keep tripping me up now more than any other suit. I'm developing a little bit more comfort level with the other suits, but wands is the one that consistently still trips me up. And then with the Halloween tarot, I also have this kind of blockage with imps. So not just because they're the suit of fire, but when you think of the four things, pumpkins, bats, ghosts, imps, I have a blockage with connecting to the concept of imps. And maybe it's because they're little devilish creatures, and I don't really buy into concepts of devils or demons or anything like that, so I feel like that's why I had this kind of aversion to them. But I was thinking about that today when I got up here to my office space, which I need to hang some stuff on the walls behind me or something, it's still very plain right now. I was thinking about that and thinking, hello, Kara, like why haven't I thought of this sooner? Usually when something comes up where one element is overactive in my life or one element is noticeably underactive in my life, I look at that and I think, okay, well, what does that say about my life right now? What am I missing from my life that is that element is not showing up? Or what is overactive in my life right now that this element is showing up more than anything else? So I don't know why I didn't think of this before, but I will be interested to see if any of you thought of this when you heard me say that in that video, which will be posted on the 20th. So I'm recording this ahead of time before that video even goes up, but I'll be curious to look and see if any of you uh, come up with that also. Like, hey, Kara, why don't you take a look at what it is about imps and wands and the element of fire that maybe you have a blockage with right now. If you thought of that, props to you. So I went back and I looked at the little white book that comes with the Halloween tarot. So first of all, I just want to share her little explanations here of why these symbols were chosen for the suits. And really, it just it makes so much sense to me. I don't understand why some people are like, that, nah, that doesn't seem right. I get it. I'm with you, Kipling. The suit of pumpkins. Uh, pentacles has become Halloween pumpkins. As the suit of the ancient element Earth, the pumpkins describe all things that are physical, intangible, real, and solid. Things you can taste and smell, and of course, older tarot decks use coins as emblems of the medieval merchant class and practical day-to-day -day life. Adding a magical element to the suit, coins became pentacles, metal discs inscribed with mystical five-pointed stars called pentagrams. Today's pentacles, or better yet, pumpkins also stand for material success, property, possessions, wealth, the equivalent of a bountiful fall harvest. This is the king of pumpkins. It's just the one that happens to be on top of my pile of pumpkins here. So I was looking for all of the imps cards. So I separated them into suits and the major arcana. So there's that. Ghosts 
have taken over the traditional tarot suit of cups in honor of Halloween. The ghost cards are haunted by the ancient element of water, the symbol of the fluidity of the subconscious mind, dreams, instincts, and emotions. Ghosts like water are mysterious, changeable, sometimes murkily obscure, and sometimes transparent, like vapor. Like water, and like our deepest feelings, they can slip right through barriers or appear out of nowhere. In the context of the Halloween tarot, think of them as friendly ghosts, as the suit generally speaks of love, friendship, and happiness. This old-fashioned depiction of ghosts was based on a 1920s Halloween ghost candy container. Trying to find a good picture of the ghosts here for you. Yeah. So this ghost design was inspired by a 1920s candy container. I think that's awesome. Kipling, I love this deck. This still isn't a review video. There's just going to be multiple videos of me talking about my experiences getting to know this deck. The suit of bats. Do, 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 do. There's these cute little drawings in here too. Hold on, I need to wipe off the camera. It's bothering me that it looks a little murky, but I didn't want to have to edit this video, so. There we go. That's a little better. The suit of bats. Since the traditionally dark and frightening tarot suit of swords belongs to the element of air, the Halloween rendition of the suit logically takes the form of bats, the only true flying mammals and exquisite creatures of the night sky. The bats comprise the thinking suit, reflecting a bat version of the intellect, the uncannily sensitive radar of these nocturnal creatures that helps them find food and avoid collisions even on the blackest of Halloween nights. As a bat expertly navigates the darkness, these cards indicate the need for us to slice through confusion and deception with swift precision. I love that explanation. That's even a step beyond what I said about bats naturally being air because they're flying creatures. That's so awesome. That and the fact that they can still pierce with their claws and teeth, like I mentioned. But even going through and talking about like their radar capabilities and being able to find their way in the darkness no matter what. That's, that is so awesome. I love it. Uh, still, there's a flip side to the bat suit, the side of conflict, struggle, disaster, and pain, the mythical side of bats that has historically made us shudder. Their pointed, sharp-toothed faces, the nocturnal swooping, and eek, the tangling in our hair, the human bloodsuckers, the witches familiar. Let's just say some of the cards aren't pretty. On a lighter note, the bat cards reveal a brave willingness to confront battle head-on, even when it seems too dark to see clearly. Fantastic! Alright, and then finally the suit of imps. This is the one that I'm struggling with, so I just reread this, and this gave me a clue. Alright? The suit of imps. Since the traditional tarot suit of wands is linked with the ancient element fire, the devilish scarlet imps make a delightful Halloween suit equivalent. Fire sparks the creativity that burns inside us, not just artistic ability, but the passion, vision, and labor needed to create or invent anything. In medieval times, wands represented the peasant class, and the cards are still associated with the sweat of the brow. The imps are a suit of energy, spirit, growth, and enterprise, reminiscent of the magician who pulls rabbits out of hats in the Major Arcana. If your tarot reading reveals a handful of imps, you may be pulling a few rabbits out of hats yourself. She's talking about the card that I showed in the last video. The magician pulling the rabbit out of the hat. Look at that imp, he's so excited. Like, whoa, did you see that? Where'd that rabbit come from? He just made that appear out of nowhere. So I was reading through the explanation of the cards in the suit of imps, right? Because I figure if I'm having trouble with wands in traditional forms, but the Halloween tarot is so fun and childlike, maybe this will help speak to what it is that I need to know that's blocking me about the suit of imps and the element of fire and the suit of wands. And it's all about creativity and passion and action and vitality and energy and inventing things and creating things. And basically the motivation is what that speaks to to me, the motivation to make things happen. And that explains so much to me about why that's a blockage for me right now. Because, and this is why I'm saying, I should have thought of this way earlier, because I've been doing a lot of work for working towards creating coursework, creating new offerings for you, taking my spiritual business a step further beyond these beautiful freebie videos that I do on YouTube, but actually coming up with some deeper offerings 
to work with people similar to my Saturn Returns course, that kind of format. So my Saturn Returns course is the one that I've really been able to start and we're already in our second iteration of that. So really awesome having a good time with that and starting to get a feel for how I need to set things up and preparing things and scheduling things. And I am currently working on developing three new courses, one of which I wanted to have up this month, so I really need to get working on that and hopefully get it up next week at the, at the earliest and so that it, we can have it in time for the end of the month because it's good for this time of year, but it's also relevant to any time of year. Now would just be a good time to launch it um, for the Northern Hemisphere, so it might be Wheel of the Year related. And in the Southern Hemisphere, they've got half a year before this time down there anyway. But yeah, I'm working on developing three courses right now and just trying to prioritize and planning out and brainstorming and finding the time to do those sorts of things. Finding time to do my creative endeavors has been a big thing too. And my partner is struggling with the same thing. My partner is a musician, singer, songwriter, and we have just had so much going on lately that we've said this a million times, we feel like we're being blocked by our circumstances or that we're blocking ourselves based on the choices that we're making in our day-to-day -day lives and what we have to prioritize or what we choose to prioritize. We are blocking ourselves from our creative endeavors. So that makes a lot of sense as to why imps and wands and fire feel like a blockage for me right now. Even though I am a Leo, I am a Leo sun, so I am a fire element and I've always felt very connected to the energy of fire and very disconnected from the other elements. And over the years, I'm developing more of a relationship with the other elements, bringing everything into balance. And then fire has just kind of gone, woo, creative things have just kind of gone on the back burner, so to speak, in terms of fire. So yeah, that is something I totally should have thought of sooner. And if you thought of it when you heard me say it in the last video, props to you. You get a bonus digital cookie. Here you are. It's vegan and gluten-free and has nothing that you're allergic to. Yay! So, my question for you all is, have you been thinking about the role that the elements have been playing in your life recently? Where are you with your connection to each of the four classical elements? or if you are a fan of the Chinese system of the elements, which of the five elements do you have the strongest connection to right now, and which one of the four or of the five or whatever system you use, which one or ones might you be feeling a little bit of a blockage from or a disconnect from, and what can that tell you about what is being blocked from your life right now, and what kinds of energies might you need to be working with to bring that element back to a balanced place in your life right now. So if I had to guess, I would say that my air element is always really high, similar to the fact that my throat chakra is always very open, <laughs> my communication chakra, and um, all of my thought-related things. I'm very much an intellectual, thought-minded, thought-minded, that sounds redundant. Um, I'm a very thought-focused person most of the time, so I would guess that my air is up here. I'm doing a lot of earth and pentacle and pumpkin-related stuff, so I would say my pumpkin and earth pentacle energy is somewhere like up here. And my water energy is probably at about balanced, and my fire imps wands is down here. So I need to bring this up, and I might need to balance these two back out, because really, balance is where we want things to be, like at a, at a normal level. We don't really want things to be super duper high and overactive, and we don't want things to be super duper low and underactive. Same goes with our chakras. We don't really want them to be overactive. We don't want them to be super closed up and blocked. We wanna go for a state of balance. So, if you haven't thought about that recently, take this as a cue <laughs> from my life to you to take a look at that and see um, maybe what's going on with that. If you read tarot, Think about it in those terms. Which one of the suits have you been feeling a little bit of a blockage with recently? 
because it's really helped me. I mean, it didn't solve the problem, but now that I know that that's what the blockage is, I know what energy I need to work with and I know what things I need to do. So I need to do some more creative things. I need to open up that impish energy, play and have some fun, be creative and just invent stuff and make stuff happen and not keep overthinking it and not worry about you know, making it a tangible, solid thing right now that like I have to be able to get this in people's hands digitally over the internet. But just, just the creative process. I need, I need to create the things, right? So, cool, good talk, good lesson. I'll see you guys next time. Oh, by the way, do you like my hat? I just finished this the other day. I've been crocheting a lot. This is a mint yarn because I'm obsessed with mint right now. I'm really happy that it's so like, in fashion because there's mint everything everywhere. I think it goes really well with the blue in my hair, which you can't see at all right now because of this lighting. But anyway, let me know if you like these. I can make some for my Etsy shop and you can have one and I can make little fancy things to go on it. I can put patterns on it. I can add a flower, whatever. I've just been making a lot for myself lately. Crocheting is one creative thing that I love to do that does result in something tangible that keeps my head and ears warm because I'm a freeze baby. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to be awesome, blessed to be, and goodbye.